five quarterbacks were selected in the first round of the 2021 NFL Draft, all with varying situations for their careers and for their first seasons in the NFL. I'm going to go through every single quarterback selection in this year's draft, evaluating them individually and providing my insight on how I think these rookies will turn out in their first year, as well as their potential futures throughout their entire career. First up, the obvious number one overall pick, the big name generational savior for the Jacksonville Jaguars, Mr. Trevor Lawrence. In Trevor Lawrence's rookie season, we can expect something very similar to what we saw with Joe Burrow last year before he had his season ending injury. If you recall from what we got from Burrow, he made a lot of really fantastic plays. He shined in difficult situations where he had minimal blocking, not very good receivers, but a consistent, decent run game. He didn't have much blocking for him, and oftentimes, as I said, was being chased down by opposing pass rushers. That seemed to be the butt of the joke until he eventually ended his season because of a serious knee injury. Now we're hoping that Joe Burrow comes back healthy and plays the same way that he did at the start of the year. And also for Trevor Lawrence's case, we're hoping that his season doesn't end the same way that Joe Burrow's does. But leading up to that, we saw a lot of flashy throws. We saw a ton of great play and Trevor Lawrence has the talent to flash all of those things. Luckily for Trevor Lawrence, he has a better offensive line going into his first year than what Joe Burrow had and also than what Offensive Rookie of the Year Justin Herbert had in his first year with the Chargers. If you take a look at the group, Cam Robinson, Juwan Taylor, Brandon Linder, it is a decent offensive line. Now it's not a top 15 group, they're not going to be an elite offensive line this season, but if Justin Herbert can win Offensive Rookie of the Year and Joe Burrow can make the plays that he did with literally nothing, literally one of the worst offensive lines in the NFL, then Trevor Lawrence is going to be a lot better off in his first season as the starting quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars. What also benefits Trevor Lawrence's situation is that similar to Herbert and Joe Burrow is he has mobility capabilities to play on the run, to make throws off structure, to do all the things that modern quarterbacks need to be able to do to succeed. It also helps that he has a really underrated offensive weapon arsenal surrounding him. DJ Chark has been one of the more underrated receivers in the NFL, not being talked up enough about how good he could potentially be if placed in the right situation. And now he has a competent quarterback that isn't named Gardner Minshew. LaVisca Chenault in his first year showed us a lot of really, really great stuff. And stepping into this next season, he should be the secondary option in this receiving group. What ultimately excites me the most about this Jaguars offense is the running back tandem that should be led by Travis Etienne, his former teammate. Not only is Trevor Lawrence paired with a guy that he is used to playing alongside, a guy that was highly productive in college because of his elite athleticism and how fast and quick and elusive he was. But on top of that, you throw in James Robinson, who had an unreal season as an undrafted free agent running back. Those two players are going to work well off of each other. Now, the thing is here with James Robinson, we tend to see these UDFA running backs have a really good first start to their career, and then they tend to tail off. Look at Philip Lindsay. He's a perfect example of what to expect from Robinson. Now, that doesn't mean that he still can't be productive, but him stepping into a secondary role, a one-two punch to Travis Etienne, he's a little bit more power, a little bit more contact than Etienne is going to be. That one-two punch is going to provide multiple opportunities for pressure to be taken off of Trevor Lawrence. Because of all of these things around Lawrence, he is going to be able to succeed early on statistically and not have to put everything on top of him. Oftentimes with these rookie quarterbacks, we tend to see guys that are forced to do everything. Consider what happened with Sam Darnold. For the first few seasons in his career, he had no receivers, a low quality offensive line, and no running game. Trevor Lawrence might not have elite players at every single spot, but he has young talent and he has better options than some other rookie quarterbacks have had in the past few years. Now, one thing we do have to take into account here, in this first season that Trevor Lawrence will be the starter, he is likely going to do statistically very, very well. He'll probably be good enough to win Offensive Rookie of the Year, similar to what Kyler Murray did in his first year with the Arizona Cardinals. 
However, this Jaguars team is still going to be bad. Just because Trevor Lawrence has success and he does great does not mean the Jaguars are going to be a winning team in 2021. This team is still very, very bad defensively. They were really bad last season and they're stepping in with a new regime and also a very, very young core. Ultimately, despite them being bad defensively, this whole roster is exciting to look at the outlook for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence, as he continues to develop, is surrounded by young talent. Guys like Josh Allen and Caleb Von Chazon are still yet to really hit their full stride. CJ Henderson is only going to get better. There is a lot of really talented young players on this defense, not to mention all of the young guys that are going to be playing on offense with Trevor Lawrence. This team is on the trajectory to go from a bottom tier NFL franchise to developing into a young, talented team within the next few years. And I know it's it's hard to truly commit to a guy like Urban Meyer, a former college coach who had a ton of success, and say that he's going to have the same success in the NFL. It is a completely different game. But what he did in his first draft was go after blue chip talent, guys that were four and five star recruits coming from big programs that know how to win. Those players are going to develop and turn into a strong base for what this team needs in order to succeed. Folks, make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of the videos I'm going to be releasing for every single quarterback in this 2021 draft class. Also, check out my podcast, the Believe in NFL Draft Prospects podcast for fantastic interviews with guys like JC Horn and Patrick Sertain, as well as in-depth analysis from two fantastic NFL draft analysts, Ryan Roberts and Alex Gilstrap.